NVIDIA is breaking your CPU, making it run all sorts of slow. Microsoft is getting ready to deliver you Windows 12 and AMD's most exciting product in years at least in my opinion, is coming. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Tuesday, March 7th, 2023. And we're gonna start off today talking about a new bug that is popping up in the latest graphics drivers that are coming out from NVIDIA. Turns out that the latest drivers from NVIDIA are causing a 10% CPU utilization in the NVIDIA container program whenever you boot up or even leave a video game, making it so that your PC is gonna be consuming more resources than it needs to and likely running slower in the video games and other applications. Now, it is being reported that NVIDIA does know about this bug and it's on their list of hot fixes to come out with. And the easiest way to fix it as of right now is to just roll back to the previous drivers that were stable. But NVIDIA is saying themselves that a driver hot fix should be posted today. So if you've been experiencing some slowness, you recently updated to the NVIDIA drivers, maybe wait for that to drop or roll back in the meantime. Today's video is sponsored by AliExpress. I've constantly picked up things from AliExpress for the channel throughout the years and they have some great promotions going on right now. As part of their choice day campaign, I got this Red Dragon Fizz K617 RGB mini keyboard. It's got great RGB, helpful right angle connector, an ultra compact 60% mini keyboard with full N key rollover, but with some incredible features at its price point. The white and gray version that I picked up has red switches, but it comes with replaceable switches so that you can create a mini custom keyboard with switches that suit your preferred style. And the price of the Fizz K617 keyboard makes that a great budget entry point for a build-it-yourself mechanical keyboard. But it gets even better with AliExpress's Choice Day, which offers free shipping on any purchase of items over $10 as long as you use their app or mobile website. So be sure to check out AliExpress's Choice Day and enjoy the wide variety of items on AliExpress's app. Big thanks again to AliExpress for sponsoring today's video to hopefully help make it so that your PC can run a little bit faster when CSGO 2 comes out later this year, potentially even later this month because that's now being reported from games journalists. Also finding some details in Steam itself talking about CSGO sequel, which should be debuting a decade after the original one came out. Now, this isn't the first time that CSGO sequels have been talked about. This has been a major rumor that's been swirling for a while, but there's also some details of it being found in NVIDIA's GPU drivers with references to CSGO 2.exe and CS2.exe. So multiple reports are coming in saying that Valve should be getting ready to announce this. There are some improvements coming to CSGO 2. Two, which will be graphical fidelity as well as 128 tick servers to help make sure that the server is updating more frequently to make it a bit smoother of an experience. But you can see here in the drivers, it is referring to CSGO2.exe and CS2.exe. And while it might be possible that CS2.exe could be referring to CSGO2, it could also be referring to City Skylines 2, which got its official announcement yesterday because that's gonna be debuting sometime in 2023. No real announcement of a ton of features or any sort of specific specific release date, the announcement trailer is simply saying that it is arriving in 2023, probably towards the latter half of this year. I'm curious, is this a favorite game of yours, especially with SimCity not really holding up? City Skylines, did you go to it? Did you play a lot of it? Let me hear from you down below in the comments while I hear from Reese. Yo, welcome back to FD Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. And we have deals, it's our, it's our whole thing. I'm just excited about today's one because we have the Sennheiser HT650 open back headphones. I will praise these things into the ground because because I love these headphones so much. If you're doing any kind of audio intensive work, just get these and don't even second guess it. They're currently going for only $300, which is $199.95 off or 40% off, whichever makes you feel better about your decision. But then secondly, we have the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X doing another price drop. It's currently going for only $211.33, which is 53% off. I, good processor. And just remember, you can find the links to these and more in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Thanks, Reese. I got a great deal for you, and that's Windows 12. Yeah, you thought Windows 11 was the latest upgrade? No, there's been details coming out from Intel and Microsoft kind of behind the scenes that Windows 12 is being prepped as we speak, but there's new indications that Microsoft might start pushing out a few features with their new Canary channel for beta testers who want to actually get the latest access to different features that Microsoft might be rolling out. 
child. So they made changes to how they're doing their beta program. They renamed one of their channels and then they're adding an additional one. So you can see the dev channel has changed, which is more for enthusiasts, but then the Canary channel, which is gonna be for giving out the latest builds that might be unstable, limited releases, or potentially even new kernels. With XDA speculating that this is likely how Microsoft is gonna start testing the Windows 12 update that could potentially be coming out. Now, there's not a whole lot known about switching to Windows 12 at this point, just the fact that it's named. Microsoft hasn't said anything publicly about it. They haven't admitted that they're moving on from Windows 11. It took them forever to admit that they were moving on from Windows 10 because that was supposed to be the last operating system, at least according to their predecessors. Windows 11 is not even two years old at this point, so this is a little bit of a further development cycle that Microsoft might be pushing out if they are giving Windows 12 details, and they're still continuously tweaking and adapting Windows 11 to be better even as we speak. We talked about in a previous episode of Hot News how they're finally getting a volume mixer, which if it took them this long to get a volume mixer into Windows 11, I think I can wait for Windows 12 to be a little bit more fleshed out. And that's exactly what I would want from AMD's drivers. And one could have presumed that's exactly what they were doing when it took them over two months to deliver drivers to anything besides their RX 7000 series GPUs. But it turns out, as we were reported at the time, that updating to the latest drivers, if everything didn't go perfectly, could permanently corrupt your Windows install. And now it's being reported by PC World and AMD that, yeah, this is real. This wasn't made up by a whole bunch of people. And there's a few ways that you can get around it. And that's gonna be by making sure that the factory reset option is unchecked during the driver installation, which is exactly what we said when this came out. That was the report that was being given. The only detail here is that PC World got AMD to confirm that this is an actual issue that's happening in some driver installations with AMD saying it's an extremely small number of instances, which we've heard that line from them before. So it's cool to hear them say it weeks after the fact after it's already screwed over other people's systems, and now they're finally divulging it when a journalist put their heels to the fire about it. Good job, AMD, at constantly staying ahead of problems and communicating with your customers. We really appreciate it. Let me know if you've experienced this issue when you've updated to the latest AMD Adrenaline drivers. I wanna hear from you down below in the comments. But let's talk about some AMD things that I am very excited for because we are getting back into a race that we haven't seen for the last few years, and that is high-end desktop chips. When as a content creator, as a pro enthusiast, I love these types of CPUs. Intel has been out of the game since they launched their 10980XE, which was just a rebrand of the 9980XE, which was just a rebrand of the 7980XE. And so AMD didn't need to compete because Intel didn't have diddly squat. Well, Intel looks like they're gonna be coming out with some good Sapphire Rapids high-end desktop chips, which is gonna be higher core count, more PCI Express lanes, more for the people who actually need to add in cards and do a whole bunch of professional work. And so StorePeak, the upcoming Threadripper 7000 series C, CPUs have been added to CPU Z. These are likely going to be launching sometime in September. So we're still about six months out from these, but the reports are coming out that this is going to be a split generation. You're gonna have the workstation, which is where AMD has been positioning themselves for everybody who's working in data centers who can afford thousands and thousands of dollars for their entire setup. But then there should be the high-end desktop version of Threadripper 7000, which is going to have quad channel memory instead of eight channel memory. And then it's gonna have six 64 PCI Express lanes instead of 128, which for most professionals is going to be an exceptional amount. So this is just bringing the competition back into the high-end desktop game, making it so that there's more options for the people who don't wanna be shelling out for the tens of thousands of dollars for a server, but then can actually still get some of the benefits. And you can also overclock on the high-end desktop chips. It's gonna be a good environment, hopefully later this year as AMD rolls this out. Now, there's not a whole lot known about what what core count this is gonna go up to. 64 cores is pretty much guaranteed. It could potentially be up to 96, which is what the Epic chips are based on, which is their real server stuff. But the workstation stuff could potentially also go up to 96. There's at least, from what we understand, no physical limitation for that to happen. But new competition in a high-end market doesn't affect a whole lot for gaming, but makes me excited to do some new editing PC builds potentially later this year. Let me know if you've ever thought about picking up a Threadripper or if you have a reason for a high-end desktop chip down below in the comments. I'm gonna let you know that this episode of Hot News is over. I'll catch you back here for more of the hottest tech news tomorrow, my friends.